Yo, 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 what's up everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie comic interview. It's your Cape Crusader Cody and we are keeping it geekly with our new friend Kevin of I Have a Demon, which is a awesome new webtoon that I just stumbled across. I'm so excited to break it down with you guys. We are gonna not only be diving into the history of it and everything in between, but actually taking a look at chapter one. So without further hesitation, Kevin, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. I am great. How are you, Cody? I'm fantastic. It is 9 p.m. right on the dot EST over here. So it's just got dark outside. The kids just laid down for bed. So I am ready to break down some comics. Awesome. So right. how how are you though? Uh, welcome. You know what's what's been like your history with uh, creating webtoons? You know when 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 did you start this? You know let's let's get a little bit of uh, the beginning into this. Sure. Yeah. Um. So I recently. Um, got into creating webtoons. Um, I was reading them for a little while. My husband actually got me interested in web comics. Um, I didn't know what they were for the longest time. I like, <laughs> spend a lot of time on the internet. Uh, <laughs> so I was a little bit in the dark. But when I found them, I, I thought that they were very interesting. You know, it, it was a different way to, um, you know, to share stories that we would traditionally read on paper. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was cool that I could bring it with me wherever I went. And it was nice um, in situations where, you know, if I was traveling, um, I could read, or if I had a break at work, um, I could just pull out my phone and didn't have to carry books around with me. So I thought that that was great. Um, I'm also a very visual person. So reading a comic was much easier for me than reading a book. It was very difficult for me to focus when there's a million words on a page, <laughs> uh, you know, and I had had the idea for the story for a long time, I think I first started drafting it back in like 2016. Um, and I, I tore it apart time and time and time and time and time again um, until I finally got to a point where I felt like I wanted to start turning it into something tangible. Mm -hmm. um, and then that was when I, I kind of started to um, create characters um, and flesh out the story a bit more. But I had a lot of areas where I struggled, where I didn't know what to do. Uh, with this part or with this character that I made, and, but I really wanted to put them into the story. Um, and my husband helped me out a lot with that. So he and I have kind of been- uh, that's, writing, that's awesome. Yeah, we've been writing a lot of it together. He's been helping me create characters and um, you know fill in plot holes and things of the like. So um, back in uh, December of 2020 was actually when I finally decided to go digital. Mm -hmm. I am not a digital artist at all. I am a traditional artist, pencil and paper. Um, I don't have fancy software, anything like that, but I didn't want that to stop me. Um, so I grabbed my laptop and my finger and I started drawing. And uh, That you know. is awesome. So so uh, <laughs> was chapter one done using that technique? My entire webcomic is done using that technique. <laughs> that, yeah, that that is some dedication there. I mean, we were just kind of talking about that earlier. Like if it doesn't get done, it doesn't get done. and. You really right. took that philosophy and, and, and ran with it. I mean, so before this, though, was there anything else that you were working on? Or was this kind of like your first venture into this territory? So this was the first one that I've actually started to illustrate. Um, I have written a lot of short stories throughout my life. Um, a lot of them I did in school, but I did win a couple of awards for them. Um, so that kind of is what got me into writing. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been very good with words and putting sentences together on paper. Um, so I wanted to use that to my advantage, um, but obviously add a visual aspect to it. Um, I do have another story concept that I want to start working on, but I don't want to start it until I have it even is finished, um, which will be quite a long time. <laughs> so I do have the ideas on paper, um, but it probably won't be something that comes to life um for at least another few years yeah and we we could definitely uh, touch base on that uh tor more towards the end so that 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 way we give it its own little space so with uh, i have a demon you know this is a really unique story it's a tale of trauma woven into supernatural action and horror uh with a diverse cast of characters i mean it seems like a pretty unique concept you want to care to kind of start to break that down and give us a little bit of a an idea of what we're looking at yeah absolutely so um, just to start off, like my husband and I are both very, very influenced by anime, um, mostly like anime and manga, like classics from the 80s, 90s. Um, my husband's favorite anime is Berserk. Ooh, so, yeah. Yeah. So obviously we wanted to incorporate some of the emotion that you get 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you read or when you watch Berserk, because obviously a lot happens, you know, and it has very dark twists and turns, but it also has its lighter moments, um, you know, when you don't have as much of that. Um, and it's very heartwarming at times, but then it's also very heart wrenching at times. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was kind of the feeling that I wanted to carry throughout the story. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where a lot of the horror and the gore aspect comes from, because there are going to be some very dark moments, um, you know, and that's not something I want to sugarcoat. That's, you know, it's it's very real and it's very present um, throughout the story. So, you know, when it gets to times like that, like there's probably going to be a lot of trigger warnings and a lot of it's probably going to get taken down by Webtoon. <laughs> so what's it what's it like publishing on Webtoons? I, 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 we were talking a little earlier and you said there was a, you were able to see more of the, the graphic scenes and the gory aspects on uh, Patreon. Um, so what's Webtoons like? You know, are they very sensitive? Do, do they like take things down without giving much notice? Not necessarily. Um, the the customer service, from what I've seen, or I guess I should say, not not necessarily customer service, but like the staff that you you know you can reach out to them if you're unsure if uh, a particular panel or a page is not you know if you're not sure if it's within the guidelines, and they'll be able to tell you um, if it is or not. And mm -hmm. if you're on, if it's something that's kind of on the fence, uh, a lot of times they let they'll let you get away with it. Um, they do have boundaries most specifically when it comes to like uh sexual content and things like that um obviously there has to be kind of a, a line drawn there mm -hmm. when it when it comes to like excessive violence and um excessive blood and things like that it um it does you know they do kind of have to have you censor it a bit because you know there's there's all different kinds of audiences reading these things so that's why um you know, when, when you're having an episode that's more graphic, you know, you can put a trigger warning at the start of the episode, but, um, you know, they still want you to kind of limit the amount of need for that, I suppose. Is that's that, my, that's is that to keep them like safe from like legal troubles or something? It's it's more so, um, so that when people are reading a story, they know like, hey, this is going to be present in here. So if this triggers you, don't read it. Um, and, you know, and... I'm not entirely sure. So, uh, so I, so, sorry about that. I meant uh, oh. the, the, in, in, in the aspect of them like taking it down. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, fortunately, I have not had anything taken down yet, but I feel like there may be parts of my story where I will have to worry more about that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to be looking definitely more closely into it as I get um, to that point. There may be some other Webtoon creators who have had experiences where they've had work taken down as a result of it uh, being just a little bit too much. Um, I I fortunately haven't uh, had that problem yet, but I feel you like- You lucked out, it seems, huh? Yeah, so far, so far, but it's still the beginning. So there's plenty of opportunities for this to still happen. <laughs> hey, real quick, we have Oblivia <laughs> over on Twitch saying hi, and then we have Red Sea Comics just in time for one of the best comic shows out there. Hey, I can't wait till you're next uh, in this seat, uh, Red Sea. We'll have you on here soon. <laughs> so, uh, Kevin, uh, give us a breakdown of uh, the protagonist that we're looking at. You know, we have two unique protagonists, it seems. Yes. Um, so, Kagan and Akiru, um, I kind of based a lot off of myself. Um, they kind of represent my fight or flight instincts. So, Akiru is generally more how I am like on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm very timid, I'm shy, I'm very introverted. I don't really uh, interact with people very often. I'm very closed off. Uh, growing up, I lived a very sheltered childhood, so I wasn't exposed to a lot of things until an older age. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of reflects into Akira's character because he's very timid, he's very shy, he's friendly towards everyone he meets. Um, but he doesn't like to talk a lot unless it's with his close friends. Um, and then, you know, he growing up, he he's a farmer, so he doesn't get exposed to a lot of other other cultures or other, mm -hmm. you know, other aspects of life. Uh, whereas uh, Kagan represents more of the side of me that wishes I were more outgoing and wishes that I had more of the ability to stand up for myself 
um, or to speak out to people when, you know, when they say something they shouldn't be saying or, mm -hmm. you know, like that or like growing up getting bullied. I wish I had the ability to stand up to them then and be like, hey, look, you know, you can't treat me like that. You can't talk to me like that. Um, and like, I'm very overprotective of um, the people that are close to me. And uh, Kagan is a lot like that, where he will completely go out of his way for the people close to him, even if he doesn't show it outwardly, um, which you can see in uh, chapter three at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So it, that's kind of where I got the idea for their dynamic was it was kind of like uh, me fighting with myself, wishing that I were more a certain way. Um, but embracing the fact that I am this way and realizing that there's nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's still room for me to change mm -hmm. and uh, grasp more of that fight instinct when it's appropriate. Yeah. Uh, and wow. I mean, it's the, the that instinct so hard to build to. Uh, but what you know, it seems like, you know, this this comic is almost like a like a therapeutic experience for you to kind of like put like kind of like what you went through and like what you want to be able to achieve all like on one page. Yeah, very, very much so. And I, I know I mentioned it a little bit when um during the space that um, a lot of what happens in the story are personal experiences that either myself or my husband have had or that people close to us have had. Um, you know, so there's going to be a lot of parts of the comic that are extremely, extremely personal to me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty much like I'm literally putting myself on the paper as those characters and kind of living the story vicariously um, in their universe. So how does that feel like opening some of those wounds up? I mean, do you find like, you know, some of the times it's hard to like kind of push through the pages? There have been a lot of emotional moments um, when I was creating uh, some of the pages, um, you know, and it's it's a challenge sometimes to open those wounds and to kind of put myself out there like that. Um, you know, and to even just bring it up at all. I, I'm a very closed off person, as I've said, and you know, I've, I've dealt with a lot of things that are hard for me to talk about and you know especially to people who i don't know mm -hmm. uh, so you know drawing a comic to represent those things is you know very very challenging at times um particularly uh getting a little bit ahead of where you read um you will see as you go on that um ikiru's mom is very abusive and very hostile towards him and treats him very very differently than everybody else and that kind of reflects to you know my childhood growing up i have two older brothers and my older brothers were always treated better than i was um you know so it kind of it, it definitely struck a nerve when i was drawing those panels and when i was uh, writing it out because it reminded me of a lot of the experiences I went through as a child, but I think in a way it was very refreshing and very liberating to be able to get it out of my head um, mm -hmm. in, a, in a way that I don't normally do. Um, you know, like I'll, I'll, I can talk about it, I can write about it, I can, you know, make a song about it, but when it comes to drawing those feelings, it's like, a, it's a totally different mm -hmm. area. Um, so it was it was very refreshing to be able to do it and it did help me kind of deal with some of those challenges But it is still very painful sometimes to to write it or to look back and read it again We have a uh, ick this by the way over on YouTube saying what up total excellence. Welcome to the stream How are you doing today, bud? We really appreciate you stopping in and hyping it up as always so Yeah, I mean wow, it's it's really intense to kind of like dig in and kind of hear some of the backstory behind it and just like how much emotion like you put into it and i remembered you said you draw a lot of this uh using your finger like did you take any sort sort of special classes or has all of this kind of just been 100 percent you just full sending it nope just full send <laughs> i totally wing it um you know i actually stopped drawing for a while i used to draw when i was a kid um and i enjoyed it but i wasn't particularly good at it mm -hmm. um, you know, but it was fun and it was an outlet. And then, uh, you know, after a while, I kind of just stopped because I got discouraged that everyone around me could draw better than I could. <laughs> but uh, my husband actually pushed me to get back into art. So 
Um, thankfully to him, I picked up drawing again and I've been able to really, in a short time, really develop a lot of my skills. Like uh, six months ago, I couldn't draw hands. <laughs> hands are, I mean, I remember when I was trying to draw, like I'd always try to draw like Dragon Ball Z characters and I yep. could never get the hands. The hands were always like the, the, the part that defeated me the most. They're, they're very difficult and I still sometimes just kind of just say, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna, you know, <laughs> pass this. He's not gonna mm -hmm. have but um you know but like i can i feel like i'm getting much better at being able to flesh out the emotions that i want um and the positioning that i want i'm getting a lot better with like perspectives and angles and stuff and working on this comic has definitely helped with that because before i had no need to learn how to do any of that mm -hmm. I'd draw a character on a page and be done but now that i'm actually composing something i'm like oh crap i probably should have learned how to do this <laughs> <laughs> we have oblivion over in uh twitch saying we love full send energy yeah we really do i mean because that's pretty much what you have to do you just have to do it or it won't get done i mean we we I beat that dead horse all day long um, For sure. <laughs> now you said uh when you were able to draw this and release some of that was your uh euphoric oh my god i'm losing words here tonight um would you say like because you also said you weren't able to really like express and tell people about things that you went through would you say like being able to put that in the comic i mean because it's such a weird contrast isn't it not wanting to do that but then putting it out there for the public to read like how was that feeling for you uh as a whole when you uh started nailing out uh these chapters and getting the feedback so it's much easier to put those experiences and feelings out there when it's not you mm -hmm. um, but when i'm portraying True through a character it's much easier because i can pretend that it's not my pain um i can pretend that it's not something i've been through i can pretend that it never happened to me when it's a character telling that story and going mm -hmm. through the experience rather than myself um so putting it into a comic you know people don't unless i tell them people don't know i've been through that you know they think it's just some terrible traumatic experience that the character went through for the sake of the story they mm -hmm. don't know that it's actually like a real thing that i've endured um so i think that that is one of the weight one of the reasons why it's more comfortable for me to put it on paper rather than to open up and tell somebody yeah um, that makes sense you know i don't like to show that i'm vulnerable but i am very vulnerable so you know if i can put that vulnerability into somebody else and draw it on a piece of paper, it's much, much easier for me to kind of get that out there. No, that, that definitely makes sense. Uh, and you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely one uh, that understands that, you know, it's, it's hard to kind of tell those emotions to another person when it's you and they could put a face to that, but like being able to hide it behind like a character that they have no idea, you know, that definitely should, you know, allow you to kind of like funnel that energy into something that you know no one's ever going to know about unless you tell them exactly um, I, yeah i really like that so let's go ahead we built this up let's go ahead and start diving in right here is chapter one of i have a demon uh and we see our two protagonists right here on the front cover uh so do you want to give us a uh the name of who's who yes so the one with the white hair um that is kagan rosai um and the one with the black hair is ikiru kite so it is uh, is Akira drinking, or uh, what? What's this right here? Uh, <laughs> um, it's definitely a drink. <laughs> um, my husband drew the the title page, and I colored it. <laughs> oh, well, I, I was wondering if maybe this might uh, symbolize like alcoholism or anything like that, or is it was just a drink? Um, it's a little bit of foreshadowing, but I won't. Mm -hmm touch too much on it right away because it doesn't really show up until later on we have oblivia freaking out in chat right now saying wow you did that with your fingers on uh, a, a laptop i think it was a tablet right it's a laptop <laughs> oh a lap wow yeah that's it yeah jesus and the shadowing and everything like how, how were you able to do this like detailing in in the in the shirt like this it, is like it, this is insane well fortunately um i do have some brushes to my disposal so okay. i'm not drawing every single line by hand but the all of the outlining and the shading and all of that um i generally will do that by hand and it takes me a very long time and that's why i update short chapters every couple weeks <laughs> this is yeah this is insane so like on, on your laptop you, you uh is like a like where you select the brush and then use your finger to do it yeah okay yeah. yeah wow <laughs> wow even the face like just the to know you did that with your finger is like insane like that's insane it's uh it's definitely um not an ideal way to do it but it helps <laughs> very rapidly 
Yeah, no, so Ichthys, um... Kevin drew this using a finger. Like, not even a pencil, a finger. Do you, do you sharpen your fingertip? Like, what do you do? Do you push down on it really hard to get an angle? Like, what's your what's your secret? What's your technique? Um, I do. I use my full <laughs> <pencil>, uh religiously. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm always zooming in mm -hmm. so that I can get like all the little fine details, and then if it doesn't exactly match up to my sketch, I erase it and I start over. <laughs> We got uh, Oblivious saying it's nuts, and then Ikta saying mad respect. Let's go ahead. I, we're, we're so awestruck just looking at the cover. Let's go ahead and just start diving into it. So right here, we get a dreamy little uh, flashback. So what is uh, Lazina? Did I say that right? Lazina. Lazina. My pronunciation, <laughs> horrible. So uh, be okay. sure to correct me on that. Um, so what what is this area that we're looking at right here? Okay, so this is entirely a fictional world. It doesn't really exist. Um, it doesn't take place on Earth. It's just there. Um, and Lazina, um, I'm actually, uh, just to kind of touch on it a little bit, I am planning on doing some side chapters that include some lore around the, the, the world and the characters mm -hmm. like that. So this will definitely be brought up in more detail when I discuss that. But um, Lazina basically is like a, it's a farming town that was founded at the end of a war. Um, okay as like a result of a treaty between the warring kingdoms, they decided that, you know what, we're not gonna keep fighting. You know, they were fighting over this land because the land had this m strange mystical energy that mm -hmm. no, matter, no matter what was planted there or whatever lived there, it would always thrive. Um, they don't know, like it had been like that for, you know, all of time. And it was just this one area. So Lazina was founded on that land. Um, and it was it was settled by the survivors of the two warring kingdoms and it kind of just gradually grew and prospered but it's kind of isolated from the rest of the world um so it doesn't you know outside of lazina it is vastly different i kind mm -hmm. of i kind of like to think of it a lot um as the giver um you know how they lived in a bubble and within yeah the yeah bubble, it was uh, a totally different world than the outside. And that's kind of how I think of Lazina because the world outside of Lazina is nothing like what they know. And that's so where- Did you do these flowers by like uh, tapping on the screen? Yeah, I just made a bunch of dots. Oh my God. <laughs> like, like, I hope you know, I'm going through this and I'm looking at it like, this was done with a finger like like <laughs> like all this fine detail like so i hope you know i'm gonna be asking questions if, if, if it pops sure. up about how you did that because i think i i'm still like <laughs> mind blown uh, by your technique like that is such a i've never heard of anything um done that way um <laughs> yeah that that, that is it's, it's it's insane like how you're able to get your detail and 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 colors and, and everything done that way um i am a perfectionist <laughs> So we get a little bit of exposition here. This is the town. Um, I was born and lived with my family, my father, mother, and twin sisters. And I spend most of my time helping my father on our father's farm. So were you uh, a farm, a farmer as a child too, or? I was not actually, but my husband uh, lived on a farm for a okay. while. Um, so that kind of takes from him a little bit. Um, I also wanted to incorporate the fact that, yeah, he, you know, um, devotes himself to his family and his, mm -hmm. and, you know, and his family's lifestyle. So. I figured the best way for me to express that with the lore of the town was to make him a farmer and kind of incorporate my husband's experience into that. All right, so let's scroll down. It's a quaint life, but it's peaceful. And then uh, this is kind of where we get uh, one of our protagonists here. Yes. So what's the story behind these two? These two are uh, best friends? Yes, so they are childhood friends. They have known each other since they were babies. And they, they pretty much grew up together. They did everything together. And uh, Kagan was uh, always getting in trouble. And Akira was always the one trying to get him out of trouble. <laughs> we have uh, Ichthys uh, wondering if the name of the town is a Latin name. Um, I don't actually know. It's possible that it could be. It kind of just came to me one day. A lot of the names that I have for the towns and the characters um, were purely impulsive. Mm -hmm. But there are some characters and areas that actually do take their names from um, specific areas of the world and specific um, languages. Mm -hmm. So we see uh, we see it go black and white here. What was the the reasoning for that to kind of do the the color change to black and white? 
So the reason I did that was because I wanted to use the first couple pages to kind of uh, kind of use it as a setting. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the comic is generally in black and white. Okay. So just to kind of put you in that in the zone, the, the feeling of it. Yeah. Um, okay. And it's not, I, I tried to do every chapter like that, but honestly, sometimes I forgot to. So there are some chapters <laughs> purely black and white, um, mm -hmm. but for the most part, I like to do the first couple of pages um, in color just to kind of introduce you to what's happening now and then kind of set the scene before we get into the actual um, the actual scene of what's happening. Mm -hmm. So without like really doing many comics and stuff before besides what you did uh, um, that you mentioned, like how did you teach yourself to do this type of paneling and, and, and you know pers uh, perspective on the pages? I read a lot of manga. <laughs> <laughs> I read a lot of manga and I take a lot of my influence from that. Um, okay. I've, I've never even made a comic on paper before. My husband has. Um, so I used a lot of his experience as well, mm -hmm. to kind of incorporate into that. But I tried to be, I tried to frame it sort of like a, a shonen style manga. Um, and it does, it is kind of a little bit more comic y in the sense that a lot of the panels are uh, larger. There's, um, not as much kind of i tried to eliminate a lot of blank space mm -hmm. um as the story goes on i kind of do that less and less and make it look more manga ish i guess so describe it <laughs> we see uh we see these two meeting up uh, he's running after him trying to get him to stop it looks like correct yes yep so and then right here, I love it. You, uh, wait up, you fucking idiot. <laughs> this, this is crazy, too. The fact that you did this with your finger, once again, uh, still mind blown. Because uh, it's just, it's, it's insane. Like, this is this looks awesome. So uh, what was the, some of your inspiration for these character designs? Um, So I, I really like short hair on myself. Um, and that's kind of reflected with Akiru. He has the shorter hair. Um, you know, he slicks it back. I've always liked that style um and then with kagan he is kind of the side of me that likes the long hair mm -hmm. and um so i kind of incorporated that but i always have i well i guess not now but 99 percent of the time my hair is tied back so i kind of wanted to add that into um kagan's design and then i sort of used like medieval style peasant clothes uh, <laughs> as an inspiration for their outfits and kind of uh punked it up a bit <laughs> So here's just a, a humorous exchange, uh, him saying he didn't hear him calling and then him saying my ass and out of yeah. breath. <laughs> and then we're supposed to be reading this uh, left to right as well. Uh, right. Uh, right, right to left. Right to yeah. left. Okay. Okay. I, I knew it was to the left. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's the, asking them why they're so out this uh, morning um, and him, of course, doing some extra chores for his dad. So what is a white fall? White fall is winter. Okay. Um, they call it white fall just because I felt like it sounded better than just putting winter. It's a, it sounds way cooler than winter. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it, it's a fake universe, so I wanted to give it a fake season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, and all of the seasons have, have different names. I haven't gotten to all of them yet, but white fall is, is winter. <laughs> and them just kind of talking about how it's going to happen early and this town's full of idiots uh, and then him saying he has nothing else to do so he's going to lend him a hand yeah that's that's kagan's uh general attitude he acts like he doesn't want to do anything but then he does it anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> he's just uh he's very like oh man i gotta do stuff even though he doesn't <laughs> actually have to um just because he likes to complain <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, you know, that that's kind of like me at work, too. You know, I, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to complain every ounce of the way. Yeah. And then so we see these two helping each other. Um, so what's so what's happening in this? They're, they're just being friends, kind of helping each other do the chores. Yeah. So, you know, he um, it, Kagan is always finding ways to bother Akiru mm -hmm. and, to, to, you know, stop what he's doing and like have them go, you know, be a menace somewhere. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> in order to get that done sooner, uh, Kagan often helps him with his with his farm work, and uh, you know, especially when he's busy, he likes to jump in and just give him a hand so that they can mm -hmm. get there. Um, and he does that he does that frequently, but like I said, he complains about it, and it gives him something to do because Kagan is kind of lazy. So, <laughs> <laughs> and 
And so we get a little uh, fast forward to that evening. And then uh, these two were almost too busy. Uh, we see him forgot to tell him something. So who's uh, Ashar? So Ashar is- Ashar. Uh, Ashar is uh, Kagan's adopted sister. Okay. So Ashar's parents actually adopted Kagan. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, they're gonna be going out of town. She th he thinks she's leaving tomorrow morning. Um, and then this is uh, another humorous uh, panel. We see uh, him ask if he could sit, crash at his house for a little bit, to which he starts laughing, and this kind of sets off a little bit of a rage. So do you got a little bit of a temper problem yourself? Uh, <laughs> sometimes. Uh, I do. Um, my husband does sometimes. And it's just, it's mostly just like in, uh, in humorous settings where like, mm -hmm. but we'll say something to the other that, you know, maybe we didn't, like we expected them to say it, but then it's just like, why the fuck did you say that? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of where that came from. It's like, why are you laughing? <clears throat> you knew I was going to ask. <laughs> like, yeah, he's just like, it's unlike you to act actually ask permission. I remember my friends never asking. They just always assumed and stayed. Yeah. And then why are you always so intense? Fine, I'll never ask again. Yeah, this is this is exactly how me and my significant are, uh, other are as well. Like we'll have our little a little fun arguments and spats, and we'll be like, fine, I'll never do it again. Like I, I love that humorous uh, aspect that you put into this. My best friend is a lot like that too. She's more of the outgoing type, and like you know, she she's always very she's very high energy, so she's always mm -hmm. in your. And I'm always more just like, please shut up. <laughs> <laughs> And then here he's saying you don't need to ask. Um, so we see these two uh, checking each other out tomorrow. And at the this household, so uh, whose household is this? So that is Akira's house. Akira's, okay, because uh, I, I forgot his last name. Uh, yeah, Kite is his last name. Kite. So we, we're at Akira's house. And that is where the cliffhanger is. So boom, and I you you got really awesome cliffhangers too because I remember chapter two and chapter three. I'm like, God damn it! Now I do I gotta come back for more. Like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's what I was going for. I was hoping it would make people wanna um, come back and read the next chapter. I try not to um, give away you know too much, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I you know I want to end it, the chapters in a place where it's gonna make people interested to come back and read more, yeah. even even if that particular chapter wasn't that. Um, intriguing like I want it to end in a way where you know it makes the next chapter look better <laughs> so now that we've taken a look at chapter one how many chapters all together do you have available so far we are up to chapter 14 oh wow that is uh, quite a bit of work yes. uh, so uh, all of that done by finger do you have any plans on getting a pencil is someone get Kevin a pencil <laughs> I would like to eventually upgrade, get myself an iPad or a tablet and get myself some nice software that would make things much, much easier. Um, but uh, life has not worked out that way. For me. <laughs> so I'm taking what I got and mm -hmm. I'll that until my finger falls off. <laughs> hey, mad respect for that, though, because it, it definitely, uh, you know, sometimes you got to make do with what you have. And it's either at that at that point you either give up or you keep going. So it's awesome to see that you're you're, you're pushing through. How many chapters do you have planned for this series altogether? It's hard to say. Um, mainly just because the chapters are so short. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot that I'm actually leaving out in order to get the information that needs to be there. Um, which is why I'm doing a lot of the lore side chapters so that things that normally would have been filler can actually have like a place. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, it, this is going to be an extended series. It's definitely not going to be something that's, you know, a hundred chapters and you're done. Um, it's, it has multiple arcs, the story itself, um, the timeline of it spans over several years. Um, so right now, um, Kagan and Kiru are in their early twenties. And by the time the story ends, they're like almost 30. Um, wow. Yeah. So how, 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 like a chapter, how, how many days of, of, of that year would you say it is? I would say, hmm. well, I mean, it's kind of hard to say because I guess every chapter takes place at a different pace. I know between the start of the story to chapter 14, it's been about two weeks. Okay, so yeah, you do have you have a, a considerable amount of head of you. That that's awesome to see a series with that much uh, potential. We have David uh, Schmeling in YouTube as well, saying hi everyone. Finally managed to hang out a tiny bit. We appreciate you stopping by, David. Thank you. We always appreciate seeing faces in the chat. 
Uh, so, Kevin, where are you going next? You know, I know you said you have a huge world, many years um, for, for these two to, to live out in this uh, webtoon, but what are you doing next? What's on the side? What's kind of like in the, in the, in the works uh, outside of this? Sort of in the queue. Um, so we actually, my husband and I have kind of been fleshing out a sequel. Um, so there is going to be a continuation to the story and it's going to have some characters from the original story and then we're kind of playing with the common trope of the continuation is the main character's children Ooh. Um, but it is going to take a dark twist um i'm not going to say what because it would ruin pretty much everything <laughs> <laughs> so you'll just have to wait and see and read it to find out but um basically it is going to incorporate the protagonist's children and the antagonist's children kind of uh going the opposite direction i guess mm, so, okay all but, right you'll have to just wait and see where that goes <laughs> no, that, that, that that is so awesome yeah so i really appreciate you coming on taking time to break this down i think it's right right around that time for us to start wrapping up before we do though i do want to ask you one question and I think out of everyone that I ask, you probably would have such an awesome response to it because of your dedication to the craft. For anyone that's out there that's struggling to kind of get their own idea in, in progress, just to get started on it, whether it's the art side of it, the script side of it, or anything in between, what type of advice would you give them to kind of just push through it? Um, the first step is to start. Um, I actually have a coworker who wants to work on a comic and he, you know, he always is coming to me with ideas and saying this and that and the next thing. And I keep telling him, you know, you're not going to be able to get, you know, you're, you're never going to go anywhere with it if you don't start. So mm -hmm. regardless of where you're at with everything, your first step is to get it out of your mind and onto paper. And um, once you've done that, it's much easier to motivate yourself to keep going. Um, you know, if you if you keep the ideas in your mind forever, that's kind of where they're going to stay. Um, yeah. You won't be able to share your wonderful ideas with everybody else. Because uh, people like me want to read them. So uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely my, my biggest thing is just start um, and then surround yourself with people who are going to encourage you to continue. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite quotes is uh, when you die at your deathbed, it's often you're surrounded by everything you wish you would have done. So yeah. I, I love that. I love that philosophy so much. Kevin, I really appreciate you stopping on. Breaking down, I have a demon with us. Guys, that webtoon description link is in the chat on Facebook and uh, YouTube as well. Be sure to check it out. It is free to read. How many chapters do you have available on web webtoons? All 14? Uh, yeah, on webtoon, we're up to 14 chapters. I am on a little bit of a hiatus right now just for some medical reasons, um, but I do plan on continuing with chapter 15, hopefully by the end of June. Um, if not, then I will be updating regularly with the timeline on when that will be ready. But uh, chapter 14, we introduce some new characters and we start to kind of stray off to an all to a, a secondary storyline off of mm -hmm. the, the main one. So that will be uh, interesting. And uh, I'm always open to questions and comments and anything anyone has. So uh, feel free to reach out to me if anybody wants to know a little bit more. Yeah, we, we do have uh, Kevin's Twitter link uh, on the screen as well. Feel free. Do you have a Facebook or Instagram that you want to promote as well? So I don't have Facebook. Um, I have a personal Instagram and I do also have an Instagram for the comic specifically where I often will post updates. Um, it's just I have a demon underscore manga um, on Instagram and uh, people can reach out to us there. Um, and any updates that we don't share on Twitter, we generally will share there as well. I try to be as active as possible. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, I do get the notifications, so I will see people's comments. I just might mm -hmm. not get them right away. And uh, real quick, your Patreon, go ahead and shout that out too. You say uh, you offer a little bit more of an in-depth like look at the, like, the gory side of things. Yes, so the, the Patreon essentially is going to show like more of the uncensored side of the comic. So it's going to have a lot of like the NSFW stuff, a lot of the, the gore and the violence that we can't show on a webtoon just because of their censorship mm -hmm. regulation. So for those of you who want to see a little bit more darkness um, or see a little bit more of like <laughs> the, the raw side of it, uh, that would be the place to check out. We don't have anything up right now, but... Um, uh, we're going to continue to update it periodically as the chapters advance. All right. Well, hey, guys, 
Uh, you heard it here, uh, and you heard it here first. This is Kevin's first interview, so uh, very excited to do that as well. Uh, be sure to check out Kevin's respective links in the in, in the description as well. Now, with that being said, guys, we are going to be wrapping things up for the Sunday. We had David coming in. Uh, David said it's kind of early right now at 4 a.m. Oh my goodness, it is just <laughs> 10 p.m. for me right now. Shoo, waking up early to catch this. Um, guys, real quick though, I do want to let everyone know tomorrow we are going to be doing another indie comic interview. This is going to be at 10 a.m. EST. I'm just letting everyone know ahead of time. Be sure to check out that link and click notify on it so you don't miss it. Um, I feel like kind of shouting it out at the end of this kind of lets people know ahead of time. My biggest thing is like people want to watch us. They just have no idea when. So I started trying to do different things, you know, like in the Twitter things, letting people know the time, the date, and the link. Um, and this is kind of something I wanted to check out too, you know, try to throw it at the end. Uh, so anyone that's watched towards the end, usually they want to check it out. So who knows? We'll see if it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, with that being said though, Kevin, once again, thank you so much for hopping on, uh, breaking this down. And I can't wait to see chapter 15 as well. Yeah, thank um, you for having me. It was a, it was a pleasure to talk about it. it it's, um, it's very liberating to kind of yeah. get some of that out there. So thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, if uh, at a later time when you get more chapters, let's get you back on and we can kind of sure. do a recap from you know, fifteen to the to the next uh, you know other fifteen chapters. Uh, sounds like you have a whole world ahead of you. I, I'm excited yeah. for you. Thank you so much. I. Uh, I hope you guys will uh, will check it out if you haven't already, and uh, feel free to leave some likes and comments. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so with that being said, guys, we are going to be wrapping it up. I hope you all have a fantastic Tuesday night. But most importantly, guys, keep it geekly.